How's it going, everyone? Lately, I've been receiving some questions from viewers of my channel, people asking about studio equipment. People want to know what kind of lighting am I using? What kind of audio setup do I have? What kind of camera am I using? What kind of lens? So in this week's video, I'm going to walk you through everything that I'm currently using, and I'm also going to draw attention to anything that I'm no longer using, any products that I started with and then just eventually grew out of. Quick disclaimer, just so you know, nothing in this video has been provided to me for free. I am not an important enough person uh, on this platform to be receiving free products. So uh, everything that I'll be talking about, they're all things that I bought for me and uh, to be creating videos like this. How's it going, everyone? My name is Todd Domini. I make videos here on YouTube about landscape photography, product reviews, and photo processing tutorials. If all of those topics are things of interest to you, I would encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. All right, without further ado, let's begin by talking about lighting. The key light that I'm currently using is a Godox SL60W. This is a continuous LED light that plugs directly into the wall. There's no batteries. There's no bulky converter or anything like that. It is a studio light. I mean, you plug it in and it pretty much stays here. It is a uh, light that has a variable brightness on the back, so you can dial it up to 100 and then all the way down to zero with no flickering in between. It's uh, white balance. It's set to 5600 Kelvin. It's fixed at that value. That is a daylight color temperature, which is uh, a good color neutral uh, light uh, temperature of light to have. Good color accuracy, uh, fantastic brightness. I actually have this key light set right now to only about 35%. I have it pretty low because it's right in front of me. And I'll talk more about percentages uh, in just a minute. The one thing that some people really do not like about the Godox is the fact that it does have a fan. I can actually hear the fan and the light running right now. It's not totally silent. So depending on your mic setup, you might pick up a little bit of sound from that fan, a little bit of white noise. But for me, it's really not a big deal. The Godox has a Bowens mount on the front, which is an industry standard mount for lights, which means you can attach any kind of third party softbox or diffuser onto the front of it. Speaking of, the softbox that I'm using is a Bowens mount softbox. It is 38 inches and it's made by a company called Easy Glow. It has two layers of diffusion and it comes with one of these uh, grid kind of uh, patterns. I'm not quite sure what these are called, but they uh, attach with Velcro to the front of the light. And they're basically like lots of little miniature barn doors that just direct the light forward and keep it from spilling out around you too much. It just really focuses the light. So I've been trying to do a three point lighting setup with a key light, a fill light, and a backlight back here. I'll talk about that in a second, but the light over here is a, uh, it's just a basic Viltrox LED panel. Pretty cheap, you can pick these up for like about $30. This also has uh, variable brightness, and this is at about 60% right now. And the color temperature is variable on this light. So you can you know, make it cool, you can make it warm. I set this to the exact same color temperature as the key light, which is 5600 Kelvin. And the same goes for the other Viltrox, which is up there on the ceiling. That is a, uh, a Viltrox LED panel, just like this one, also set to 5600 Kelvin. And the reason I have that light up there behind me is because if you uh, illuminate a subject from behind, especially with a darker background, it just helps create uh, some separation, some depth in your image because you get you know, kind of a nice light uh, around the back of the subject. So once you have your lights, once you have a key light and you have a fill light and you have a light up here behind you, how bright should they be, right? I mean, when they all have variable brightness, do you just turn them all up all the way or you know, what do you do? So I started doing some research into this because just judging exposure on the back of the camera as I had been doing was just not accurate enough for me. And I started trying to figure out, you know, if you were a DP like on, a, on the set of a major motion picture, how would you uh, judge exposure? How would you know how bright or how dark uh, lights should be in a scene? And that's when I learned about false color. False color is available in some higher end professional cameras. But if you are shooting with you know, just a, a prosumer, DSLR, or mirrorless camera, then in order to utilize false color, you have to use an external monitor. So that's exactly what I did. I went out and I bought 
uh, a budget monitor uh, that I could connect over HDMI to my Canon 5D Mark IV, a monitor that supports false color mode. And the one that I picked up was a Feel World S55 five and a half inch display. Now this monitor is not the most robust. It does not have a touchscreen interface. It's also not the brightest, but the one thing that it does have is false color and false color is amazing because what it does is, is that it analyzes your image and it paints color over all the different uh, luminosity values from you know black to white in the scene. So you're able to see with color and not just by using your eyes, but with actual color, what the differences are in, um, in all the different light sources that you're using. So for example, then I was able to turn on false color mode on this monitor and I was able to tell that this light should be set to 35% because if I go any higher than 35, then um, it started blowing out the highlights on the side of my face over here. This uh, fill light over here didn't need to be as bright as I thought it needed to be. It only needed to be at about 60 or 50% and that for me was enough. Uh, and then judging the light back here as well. So just having that view and being able to know from a quantitative perspective, you know, what it was that I needed to adjust and to be able to see it on a display and not just guess, amazing. Okay, a couple more things about lighting before we move on. Um, another little light that I really enjoy using is this Aperture ALMC. This is such, a handy little light. And I'm sure if you've searched for uh, LED or RGB light on YouTube, you're bound to find probably a thousand reviews about this thing because it is such a cool little light. Uh, one last light I wanna mention, and that is uh, these little RGB lights that are made by uh, a company called Yee Light, which sounds like a, a Kanye West brand or something. But um, these are just standard light bulbs. You can plug them into a lamp, you can plug them into a light socket you know, anything that you have. And uh, they don't require a hub. You can connect to them with a, with a uh, smartphone app and you can change their brightness, change their intensity, change their color. They can just output regular light if that's all you want, or you can change them to uh, any hue. And like the Aperture, the color that comes out of these is super nice. It's rich, it's saturated, it's bright. And um, I think they're fantastic. All right, now let's talk about audio. When I first started making videos about a year ago, I just picked up and used what it was that I had available. And at the time that was a Rode, I think it was called a Video Mic Go. It was one of their cheaper uh, hot shoe uh, microphones that just plugs directly into a camera. It didn't require power or any kind of battery. The sound on it was just kind of okay. Just really nothing, not that great. So I got rid of the Rode microphone and I ended up getting uh, this one from Deity. And this is a Deity VMic D3 Pro. Now, the thing, there's a lot of things to like about this microphone. For one, you know, it mounts, you know, to the shoe mount on the top of your camera. It has onboard noise reduction, so you can uh, make adjustments there if you want to. It also has a variable gain dial on the back of the mic, so you can raise or lower the gain. Uh, USB-C charging, which is fantastic. I want everything to be USB-C. Really helpful when you're out traveling to have that. And the really kind of clever thing about this mic is the fact that uh, the uh, cable here, you know, the stereo cable that plugs into your camera, you know, you can plug this in and just use it as is, but it's also very clever because this can also receive phantom power. And if you know anything about phantom power, phantom power is, you know, like a, um, a current that is provided by a piece of audio equipment to power the microphone. So what you can do then is that if that's of interest to you, and if you have XLR cables and an audio recorder, you can pick up this, which is a Deity DXLR uh, adapter. And with this adapter, this just plugs into the stereo cable like this and then you can run a long XLR cable wherever you want to, wherever it needs to go. So this doesn't come with the microphone. This is an extra little add-on that you have to buy from Deity. But I used this for a little while and this worked really well because I could go out run and gun with, with the mic on the camera. And then when I wasn't doing that, I could just mount uh, the microphone to a uh, mic stand and then use it as a boom mic like this. And you know, it's like a mini shotgun microphone and the sound was pretty decent. 
But then one day I was browsing eBay, which is a really dangerous thing to do. And I happened to come across a uh, listing for a Sennheiser MKH416. Now, if you know anything about this microphone, the Sennheiser MKH416 is basically the industry standard mic. It is the microphone that most other microphones are compared to. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that people go out and buy uh, one of these microphones unless you, especially new at retail, unless you know that you're really going to have um, a solid use case for it and you're, and you're going to get a lot of value out of it. I only picked one up because I got a good deal on it. But even at 50% off, it's a pretty expensive microphone. So I love the sound of it though. What can you do? It's just something to keep in mind if you're shopping for a microphone. So the recorder that I've been using is uh, again, something I found used on eBay. This is a Tascam uh, DR60D Mark II. Now, these are actually not terribly expensive. They retail new for about $180. I can't remember what I bought this one for, but it was it was uh, definitely not at retail. Um, but for me, it's it's worked beautifully. Uh, great sound, very clean sound. You can run you know XLR cable directly into it, actually two if you want to. You know, lots of different features, too much to go into in this video. But the general idea is, you know, I put an SD card in here, I hit record, I hit record on the other cameras that I'm using and then just, you know, give it one of these so that you're able to sync it later. And, um, and it works and it's perfect. And I love using this device. Okay, next I wanna talk about cameras and lenses. Now I don't have a dedicated video camera. I've just never felt the need to buy a specialty video camera for the type of work that I'm doing. I just don't have a need for one. So I've been using the cameras that I use for landscape photography when I'm out doing that kind of work. I'm just reusing them as video cameras. So the camera that I'm filming on right now, this is my trusty workhorse of a camera, my uh, 5D, my Canon 5D Mark IV DSLR. The lens that I'm using on this uh, camera that you're looking at right now, this is the Canon uh, 50 millimeter F 1.2. And then on this camera over here, this is the Canon 6D Mark II, which is like the budget full frame, uh, you know, cousin of the 5D Mark IV over there. On this camera, the lens that I'm using is the Sigma 24 millimeter F 1.4 art lens. Now, if you've never looked into the Sigma art lenses, uh, I, I just think they're fantastic. I really like them. Personally, I'm really looking forward to Sigma coming out with some RF lenses. But that's a whole different topic for another day. Which kind of brings us to an interesting question. You know, when do you use a 50 millimeter lens and when do you use a 24 millimeter lens? Which one is better for uh, recording video content like this? Well, I think one way to think about it is to be thinking about the space in which you're recording. Because over here to the side of me, this is kind of a narrow, uh, you know, area with a wall directly behind the camera. And so, using a wide angle lens with the you know camera this close to me makes a lot of sense because then I'm not filling the frame completely. There's some room around me. Whereas over here with the 50 millimeter, I have more reach in the room. The room is deeper this way. So I'm able to put the 50 millimeter on this camera further back in the room. Personally, as far as like the differences creatively and how the focal lengths look when recording video, I do prefer the look of just standard 35 millimeter and 50 millimeter lenses when recording video because it doesn't distort facial features quite as much. Everything just looks elongated and kind of stretched and just a little bit distorted with wide angle. Whereas things are much more natural at 50 millimeter. Now, in addition to everything I mentioned in this video so far, there are some other additional uh, accessories and little fiddly things here and there that I'm using. If you're interested in seeing everything, I would encourage you to go down below and to click on uh, the show more link in the description. In there, you will find a link to a new kit that I put together over at kit.co. If you have any general questions or specific questions about you know one of the pieces of equipment that I talked about in today's video, by all means, feel free to leave a comment below. I read everything that is posted to a video on my channel. I'm on a schedule right now where I'm posting one video a week. So if uh, videos about landscape photography, about photography in general, uh, photo processing, product reviews, if those types of things are of interest to you, by all means, 
click or uh, tap subscribe below and uh, follow along because I'm going to be posting more content this year in 2020. All right, everyone, thanks for being here. Hopefully that answered some of your questions. I will see you next week.